I have finally finished watching Netflix's live action Avatar The Last Airbender. And who boy do I have a lot of thoughts that I'd like to share with you. I already went over this briefly, giving my predictions on how I thought the show would go, but now that I've finally seen it, it's time to confirm or deny what I originally thought. Let me, let me just say something right off the bat before I get ahead and go any further. This show was nowhere near the absolute war crime that the movie was. So I just want to say that off the bat, if you want to know how I feel compared to the movie, which you which you shouldn't really even be thinking about. You should get that out of your head. It doesn't exist. But having said that, let's continue. I think the best way to go about this is to compare it into two different categories. Those who have seen the original cartoon version and those who have not seen it and know little or nothing about Avatar. Because I think your reaction is going to be very, very different depending on which side that you fall on. I'm going to start off first by just saying the things that I really liked about the show. I really did enjoy the acting with a lot of the characters. I feel like every single actor played their part with their character and portrayed them in a very, very good way. My personal favorites are going to be obviously Sokka and Iroh and Zuko. I feel like those, t at least to me, were the ones that shone, shined, shineth the brightest. And I heard people make complaints about Zuko and complain that the actor who portrayed him made him a little bit too whiny, which I really don't understand because that's exactly who Zuko is. He's, he's angry all the time. He complains all the time. And I feel like that portrayal was done well. He's just a whiny, angsty teenager. I mean, I, I mean that's it. <laughs> I also thought that the bending in the CGI for this show was really, really good, which is what I kind of thought when I was reviewing the trailer or the uh, clips that we were shown. Because the clips that we were shown, the CGI was not great. So it kind of put that fear in my head, oh, is everything going to be really, really bad in terms of CGI? And it's not. The bending was done really, really well. The overall CGI of everything is done really, really well. And the fight choreography was kind of one of the highlights of the entire show. The, the fights in terms of the bending and also just the martial arts that's done. I thought that it was really, really well done. Having said that, there are a few, and I don't know why, there are a few clips in the show where the, the CGI is not as impressive, where it looks a little bit more fake. A lot of that was kind of seen whenever they were in Omashu, which really isn't, exp it isn't, a, it isn't a spoiler, it was in the trailer. So there were things in the show that I really, really did like. Having said that though, there are a lot of things in the show that I really didn't like. And I feel like a lot of it stems from two main problems. The writing and the pacing, which really are the two same, they're, they're the same sides of the same coin. Starting off with the pacing. It becomes immediately clear from the first episode that the pacing for this show is very off and rushed. Everything feels like it's going at a breakneck speed. And I'm sure that's more apparent if you've seen the cartoon, because watching the cartoon, there are things that happen in one episode that takes the span over like four or five episodes. So it really makes it feel rushed. And with those rushed scenes and with those rushed episodes, you also have dialogue that also makes it seem extremely rushed because it is just Holy exposition is all I've got to say about that. There's so much exposition in the show and monologues and explanation of lore that it's mind boggling. And I feel like that's kind of one of the main problems with the show. And it's one that I kind of had in the back of my mind and that's proper pacing. They did say before they even released it that they'd be striving away from the kind of filler episodes where they go off on adventures and help people and then get back to the more main story if that makes any sense. But the problem with that though is that those filler episodes really were kind of integral to kind of why the show was so good because it helped with character development and it helped with showing the journey from point A to point B. But with these episodes being a lot more rushed, you really don't get that buildup that you would normally get from the show. It feels like they, like the relationships between Katara, Aang, and Sokka, they just don't feel as fleshed out as they should have been. In season one of Avatar, there are about 20 episodes. And when it comes to the live action, there are only eight. And I know that's different because, you know, with those eight episodes, they're all about an hour long and the TV ones are what, 20, 30? But even then, each episode in the cartoon version, it's its own episode that's working towards, you know, the, the end goal of, of going to the north. 
but you really don't get that in the uh, in the live action one and everything just feels so crammed and as somebody who's watched the cartoon you can actually see like what episodes were put into this episode because there are characters that show up and some of the episodes are like oh yeah you're from that episode and that episode and you're from that episode at one point the whenever they were in omashu and without being giving too much into spoilers it really combined three no four major roles and major episodes as characters that you've seen before are put just kind of put there in the city. So obviously with this really rushed pace, it has some unintended consequences with the writing. And some of those consequences I can understand, but others I really don't. For example, there are two characters in the show that I feel like were done so dirty, and I feel like there was no need for them to be done so dirty. The first of which is Boomy. Boomy is a very lovable character in the show, and I feel like they completely butchered him in the live-action adaptation. Boomy in the live-action show isn't the whimsical, crazy genius that he is in the cartoon version. He seems a lot more defeated and just kind of over everything. I mean, at one point, he was willing to let a rock crush him until Aang kind of snapped him out of it, like, What are you doing, old man? What are you doing? What are you doing? And Boomy's just not like that at all. In fact, he's more than open to fighting the Fire Nation, and he's always been that way. So I feel like he was done very, very wrong with the live action. Who else I thought was done really badly in the live action was Zhao. Because the writer's interpretation of Zhao is not my interpretation of Zhao. And what I mean by that is Zhao in the live action Netflix just seems like this little weasel who crams his way into situations just to kind of rise to the top. For a couple episodes, he's just willing to lick Zuko's boots for a little bit, you know, just to stay close to something that he thinks will give him an edge in the competition of kind of climbing up through the ranks. And he really is like that for the majority of the show, and yes, he kind of becomes more like the cartoon in the later episodes, but still he just seems like a little bit of a weasel. And that's not really how I saw Zhao in like the original cartoon. The way that I saw Zhao was just this commander, this military guy who over time climbed his way through the ranks, but he did it through hard work and he did it through his commanding style because he had a gift with military. This guy just does not seem like he has a gift with military. He just kind of seems a, like a little bit of a doofus sometimes. So I feel like that could have been done a lot better. And before I forget, I do want to say one thing. There's one writing part that I did like with the live action, and that has to do with Zuko and his crew. There's an episode where it kind of goes over Zuko and how he got his scar, and then it implements why his crew is so important to him. And I'm, not, I'm trying not to spoil anything too much, but that part was not in the cartoon version and they added it in the live action and I thought that that was well done. That was that was good writing. Everything else is kind of iffy because it's like the dialogue is 50% monologue and exposition and the rest is just these little like jabs and, and you know humor here and there. So it's like yeah. but now it comes to the big question. Is the show good? I'm going to start off by pointing it through my own my own lens my own lens because I have seen the cartoon version the original cartoon version I've seen it multiple times and I th I'm, it's not gonna be a shocker to you but it, it's nowhere near the cartoon version it, they're just not on the same level but to that point that's what I expected and I'm pretty sure that's what most people expected if you expected this to be on par with the original or god forbid even better then you are a fool fool Having said that though, there were parts of the show that I really did enjoy, like the last couple episodes when they're in the north, I feel like they were done fairly well. I enjoyed them and I enjoyed watching it. There were a lot of parts during the beginning and the middle that I really didn't like because it was just really hard to compare the two. It was really hard to get that cartoon comparison out because you see it, you, you automatically compare it and it's like, okay, well that's not how it's supposed to go. But it isn't terrible. It's not like amazing, but I think it's 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 good. It's fa it's fairly good. Now, if you don't know anything about Avatar, how how would you feel about the show? I really can't give like an accurate answer because I have seen it, but if I were to give my own two cents, I think it really depends if you enjoy the writing that Netflix put into this because the pacing is it's still really really off and rushed and I feel like that will become apparent to anybody that watches it even if you have or have not seen the original the pacing is just that noticeable oh and I, I forgot I need I need to point out one more thing when it comes to the bending I mentioned that there's some parts where it felt off I feel like they did the water bending the worst out of everything the air and the fire are like the best ones 
The earth bending was pretty good. There were a couple areas where it looks very, very obviously CGI'd, but even then I was able to kind of close my eyes and look past it. The water bending was just very poor to me the entire time, not only because it looked very obviously CGI'd, but also whenever somebody got hit with water, like there's a, there's a part where Katara is bending and then she gets water splashed on her. This shouldn't really be a spoiler and if you're upset by it, then boo hoo. The water comes down on her and then she's just completely dry. And that happens a couple times. You get splashed with water completely dry. And I understand that it's kind of complicated to make people wet with, you know, the CGI, but, you know, it's, it's just a complaint I have. And you can take it or leave it. That's why I didn't really... This is why it's at the end. All in all, from if you've seen the original to not seeing the original, I feel like that this show was very... It's like good mediocre is the best way to describe it. I'd give it like a 5 out of 10 because it's not terrible, but it's not you know, it's not amazing. It's not this huge thing that's blowing everybody away. Nobody's going to be going to the to the Emmys or the Gram- not the Grammys because it's not music. I don't expect to see this thing get an Emmy or a Golden Globe. Having said that though, if they do release another season, I'd stop by. I'd watch it. Why not? I mean, they, they've done this. I'd like to see how they continue it. It's very obviously its own thing and it's taken its own life. It's, it's not the same story. It follows the same main story, but it's not, it's, you know, Oh, by golly, I forgot one of my most major complaints. Sozin's comment was only mentioned once, and it was near the beginning and also near the end. A major gripe that I've completely forgot is that Sozin's comment, which is a very major part of the story, which it causes everybody to be in a rush. We were in this rush to make sure that Aang gets trained and everything. Because we have this comet going by, and if this comet goes by, then the Fire Nation will be too powerful and we won't be able to stop them. That's the main point of the show but it was completely left out until like the very very end and was shown briefly near the very very beginning i can forgive that kind of because their main focus was going to the north pole to get ang you know trained in waterbending which he didn't by the way which is another complaint that i have ah. but even i can even forgive that because he starts most of his training on the road when he gets to the you know the second season when he starts to focus more on earthbending so i can kind of forgive that but still they kind of dropped the ball with those two. I don't know how I forgot those, but I'm so glad that I remembered because I'd, I'd be very upset if I if I forgot. Nevertheless, my opinion still remains the same. Very mediocre. I'd give it a 5 out of 10. And I want to point out that most of this is not because of the acting. It's not the actors. It's, it's the writing and the rushed nature of the show. And even then, that might not be the writer's faults. I think it just might be, you know, the nature of trying to cram everything into eight episodes. It just might not be possible. But I will give you a pat on the back. You did a fairly good job with the show. And I'm looking forward to a season two. I want to see what you guys do with that. But that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If indeed you still are, my name is Broxter, and I bid you all adieu.